Hi, my name is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor, and this video is about what happened to the vitamins. So here's a brief history of uh, vitamin discovery and research. There was a guy named Casimir Funk who discovered a lot of vitamins 100 years ago. The first vitamin he discovered was um, vitamin B1, that was 1911. And then in 1934, B1 was put into food. So the problem with the food was that <clears throat> grains were polished, they were refined. So the brown was taken out. The brown was where, all the, was where all the minerals and vitamins were. So, But there was this marketing idea that if we could market br uh, white rice, white bread, white pasta, and create this scenario where people think only poor people eat brown bread, or only poor people eat brown rice, rich people eat white bread and white rice. That's what they did for decades. So um, white bread, white rice lasts longer on the shelf. It has a longer shelf life. So that's because it's not nutritious. But when you're taking out the brown, you're taking out all, all the B vitamins, and if you're deficient in B1, you get heart disease, a form of heart disease that's called beriberi. Um, so they put B1 in white rice and white bread in 1934, and it saved people's lives. And they thought they were done, but they weren't done. Because later they discovered vitamin B2. And they started putting that in the white bread, white rice, white sugar. And then vitamin B3, which is niacin. You can find niacin in Twinkies. And then vitamin B5 and B6. They skipped over B4 because the government said vitamin B4 is unnecessary for humans. It's only needed by pigeons. Vitamin B4 prevents muscle paralysis. Like if your, muscle, your heart muscle seizes it up, you die from a heart attack. Well, that could be a vitamin B4 deficiency. I mentioned in another video of vitamin B15. Um, there was an article in JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, saying vitamin B15, whatever it is, it won't work. And that's just some thugs in the government or in the uh, American Medical Association trying to squash vitamins. So there's 24 B vitamins, and when you go to the health food store, you can get a B vitamin complex that has B1, 2, 5, 6, and 12 in it. Sometimes there's 3, sometimes there's 10. So there would be a total of 7 B vitamins, but there's really 24 B vitamins. Vitamin B24 has never been studied. B23, B22, B21, these, these have not been studied. Okay, there's a lot of research to be done on this. And there's been more research on Prozac and other pharmaceutical drugs because that's where the big money is and big pharma has the big money and the big marketing budgets and whereas vitamin B19 has no marketing budget and there's no research on it at all. Okay, let's talk about these vitamins I listed out. Decades ago, 1930s, 1940s, there used to be vitamin F. <clears throat> F stands for fat. So it could be like flaxseed oil, it could be uh, sesame seed oil. But that terminology has just gone away. These used to be vitamin G. And the vitamin G family is sort of like the vitamin B family. And it controls um, lactic acidosis, which, you know, too much lactic acid in the blood. Vitamin Bs are more uplifting. Um, and the vitamin G family is more calming. And can even, I've even seen it to lower blood pressure. I work with vitamin G. There's not many doctors that work with vitamin G, but it does exist. Vitamin J, that's been um, taken out of our terminology. It has to do with um, uh, plant chemicals to reduce inflammation and for incredible healing. Um, vitamin T, that actually stands for T cells. And the vitamin T was found in, it's found in sesame seed oil. And vitamin T has been taken out of our language. And vitamin U, that's found in cabbage. It's a soothing vitamin that can help ease acid reflux and heartburn. So again, th these are just vitamins that once existed in our terminology, our language, and now they're gone. So the point of this is to show you that the field of vitamins has been um, ignored for really since the 60s. And, uh, you know, in my career, I can look back in the late 90s and early 90s, there was a lot of uh, research on vitamin B12, which is good, and also ascorbic acid, which is not really a vitamin. Um, but some people call it vitamin C. The government thinks that ascorbic acid is vitamin C. So in the 90s, there just was bad research. 
And, uh, but the great research comes from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And that's when researchers would take liver and feed it to cats. And then they would heat the liver and feed it to cats. And they would take certain vitamins out of the liver and feed it to cats. And they would look and see what happened with the cat or with the animal that they were feeding. Could be guinea pigs, could be dogs. Um, and then th they're working with food. They're working with food, um, like all the vitamin complexes, minus one. Whereas now they work with one chemical, like Wellbutrin or the Prozac chemical, to see what happens to people's bodies. The next thing they do is get another chemical and see what happens to people's bodies. How about working with food, large you know, complexes of nutrients and vitamins in food, plants or, or glands? Okay, so there's my uh, story on what happened to the vitamins.